Like you start in advertising, right? And then you're like, actually, I really like making commercials. Actually, I really like animating the commercials. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really like animation. So it can yeah. always progress and change. He was like, you should illustrate for the student newspaper. Mm -hmm. Bro, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, that's fine. Neither does anyone else. And I was like, cool, <laughs> cool. Here I am now with, with like the pressure of the degree now that I've gotten it, to, to act on it. Some of the biggest things are obviously letting your work do the talking. It's like, hi. I'm Audra, and here's my website. <laughs> well, Audra, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Um, Audra is an award-winning painter and designer, an artist who leaves her mark on the world through murals. Um, she is the owner of 3 of 4 Design Company in Aurora, New York, where she designs custom-made commercial murals, branding materials, illustrations, logos, lettering, merchandise, you name it. Uh, some of her clients include Syracuse University, Salt City Market, Family Fertility, Mr. Pods, Mr. Todd's Pies, goodness, mm -hmm. and those are just a few. She is extremely talented, a formidable force, one who I'm very blessed to call my friend and a native upstate eight oh my goodness a native upstate new yorker who bleeds syracuse orange peep, peep, peep. <laughs> um and i just wanted to share her story today because i find it really inspiring and i think that it's going to be really impactful for teachers and high school students across the state and uh, hopefully across the nation so welcome thank you so much danielle that was okay. so nice I know I kind of stutter, stuttered through it, so hopefully, oh, uh, no, hopefully, lovely. didn't lose the impact of the immense work that that you've done. And it's seriously such an inspiration to me, and I'm so excited to chat about you, chat about you to our students. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. So let's dive in. Um, if you were to go back to high school and learn one technical skill that you now have, what would it be and why? Oh, that I. Oh, yeah. Um, that I now have, well, probably first of all, reading comprehension, because I just, so, I saw, learn one technical skill, what would it be and why? <laughs> so that's a big one, reading. Okay, um, yeah. But I why was, do you say that? Oh, well, just like that example, right? Um, I think it's really, <laughs> it's really important to no. read things through, um, whether it's a prompt, <laughs> A question or it's you know a uh, request for proposals um, mm, uh, some kind go. of a contract that you're entering with yeah. another person all of those kind of things um, but what I originally said was uh, wood woodworking like wood shop skills my, yeah. my high school was rural but it did have wood shop classes and I wish I would have taken those and I don't have the skill now I'm stumbling mm. my way through it like I put up some of these shelves here <laughs> and uh, I'm doing a lot more like fabrication lately and building um, and I want to do a lot more a lot more than I you know have the skill set for right now um, and so that's what I would have said taking something okay. you know I never would wow. have thought to take that in high school um, yeah. so doing something a little out outside the comfort zone would have probably been extra cool I wasn't, I didn't even expect you to say that. I was, I was like, oh, I bet Audra might say like Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, or, that would have like, been great. <laughs> no, but no, that's so real though, because I mean, everyone is going to either live in an apartment or hopefully own a home some days. Mm -hmm. And those are just so real skills that translate not just to fabrication and, you know, designing and hanging shelves in an office, but yeah. it translate to basically you know your home your life later. yeah i know exactly although i will say the painting has helped out a lot like when i you know <laughs> eventually leave this studio that i'm renting i'm gonna need to spackle up all these holes <laughs> you know <laughs> and there's a lot of holes in the wall here so. but i've got that technical skill down <laughs> um what soft skills or knowledge do you think every high school student should be graduating with to be successful, not yeah. just in everyday life, but also in the digital world, in the career force? Yeah. So, I mean, even with with how digital things are, um, you know, it it just opens up access 
for so many more people to a lot of different things. Um, but a lot of times that could make you could make you feel like, you know, oh, there's all these other people doing the things that mm -hmm. I want to do. Like, how am I ever going to begin to make my own little mark on the on my community, on the world? Um, yeah. And I really think that the way to to do something like that or to maybe set yourself apart a little bit, whether it's a job application, a college mm -hmm. application, whatever it could be, is um, like really being an active listener. Uh, mm, it's I, so true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, I really felt like for me that's kind of made all the difference, and it's mm. definitely a skill that I still, you know, am honing the older mm. I get. Um, and, you know, uh, the people who are doing the jobs excuse me, doing the jobs that, you know, or the roles that you would like to pursue, they, you know, obviously you want to reach out to them and all those things, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure you're really, like, absorbing what they say. Um, yeah. Or, you know, I guess the example for me would be a lot of um, my college professors. I just, yeah. like, really was engaged in class because I was excited to be there. Um, and I was excited to learn. Uh, and so, you know, Imagine I... Imagine that. Crazy. Being excited to learn at, a, at an educational institution. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I admit there were some classes I wasn't super thrilled <laughs> to be there. But um, in the ones that really mattered to me, I was listening and trying to remember. And so those are the professors I ended up, you know, cultivating relationships with because they were like, ah, this kid actually listened to what I was saying. <laughs> like, people want to be heard, right? And yeah. so that that is translated now to in the work that I do with um, my clients, which I'll probably mm -hmm. talk a little bit about later, too. Uh, if you don't really listen to them, uh, you're not going to figure out what they need. And it doesn't have to be a client. It can be your, your boss. It can be, you know, whatever. You really have to listen. And sometimes what they're saying they, they're looking for is not actually what they need. Um, mm -hmm. So it can be it can be a really crucial skill to have but yeah it's a soft skill it's it's a one you got to practice though if it doesn't come naturally to you for sure oh yeah absolutely and i think active listening i think communication itself is always one of those key um those key soft skills that people yeah. should obviously be graduating high school and college with yeah. but to be able to be a good communicator you have to be a good listener first and yes yes that is so true absolutely like to be a good a good writer you have to be a good reader first you know yes. all of those all of those fun things yes yeah they all are true <laughs> <laughs> um when did you start creating your portfolio and when should high school students start their their own portfolios and what do you think are some must-haves in yeah. their high school portfolio yeah i know it's a toughie um <laughs> yeah so i mean like i mentioned i went to a pretty rural high school and so we didn't have a ton of like media classes you know i did a mm. little bit of video editing my school definitely couldn't afford like adobe and everything so um, I didn't make a portfolio until well into my first year at SU, actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it was kind of wild to me that there were you know students who had curated already these portfolios, like whether that was for the photography programs, you mm. know, or the communication design, you know, all these things that were really like hyper specific. Um, and so I think. Um, Going back to, so when, the fact that you're even doing anything in high school, like with a portfolio, <laughs> the fact that you even are like, have an inkling of this is what the world I want to go into somehow, I think that's a huge, that's a huge uh, cause yeah. for celebration, quite honestly. <laughs> like that, that's awesome in my book, um, because, you know, uh, it can, it can be a time consuming process. So the earlier you can start on it, for sure, the better. Um, so I would say that, you know, when you're when you're going to create your portfolio and, you know, you might have a site, you might have, you know, um, like a free kind of online template or um, a physical leave behind version, whatever it is. Um, I think some of the biggest things are obviously letting your work just 
do the talking, right? Mm -hmm. So as much as it's your portfolio, it's your portfolio. So your work comes first, right? And you can inject some personality in there for sure. You know, maybe if you're a photographer, um, it includes like a couple, like a good mix of like serious and silly or like all, you know, this really like focused interest story that you're working on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, or in a designer, you could do little doodles, right? But so that's a good way to kind of like incorporate, you know, I'm not, I'm not just a template. I'm not just, a, you know, a number, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I also have like this fun little side or whatever, whatever your quirk may be. Um, and then, so, you know, you've got your work and um, you've got your little personality in there and then kind of um, working in, you know, a little bit about yourself too. Um, mm -hmm. I think I was seeing a lot in school, um, students can fall into the trap of, um, it's like, hi, I'm Audra and here's my website. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I don't know you, <laughs> you know, I want to see your yeah. work. I want to see the cool stuff you like to do. And then I'm like, who is this? And, I, and then I want to get into it, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's a little um, specific. So in a more, uh, you know, kind of um, generic way, just just really making stuff for, for fun first, mm -hmm. you know, and then seeing where that takes you. And then you can always kind of curate things down you can start really big and then you whittle everything down into like your most quality pieces of work, whatever that may be. Um, and it doesn't mean that it has to be a full length documentary. It can be like a TikTok you made that like blew up and it took you 10 seconds and here's why it was so cool that you did this. Great. Awesome. Um, so whatever it is, though, that you feel like the most proud of, that's the stuff that you want to incorporate for sure. Yeah. Do you think that <clears throat> the best way for high school students to start kind of curating their work would do you think that is by designing like their own website um, and hosting it that way, or what would you recommend? Yeah, there. I mean, there's so there's so many different ways that are specific to specifically the work that you do, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you wanted to be, you know, like we went to. You know, or I definitely went to like uh, school with kids at Syracuse who, you know, have ended up working for TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, like whatever. Yeah. So maybe like your portfolio like was your Instagram, right? Yeah. Um, so That's so true. Yeah. So I mean, I think like when I got to school, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy a website and I have to have the best things and all these other stuff. And the the more time I spent, the more I realized like, oh, there's all these free ways to do a lot of this. So you, you can take the time to like do a little more research and, and yeah. figure out like what makes the most sense for the world that I'm going into. And like, heck, again, like <laughs> you're just starting out. You don't even know if, the, you know, maybe you could find something out, like you start in advertising, right? And then you're like, actually, I really like making commercials. Actually, I really like animating the commercials. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really like animation, right? So it can yeah. always progress and change. I mean, I didn't go to school for murals. <laughs> <laughs> really i thought that was your major i thought that was a new house <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah Mur muraling and graphic design that was your girl <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean always just be open to you know wherever a new passion can take you um but as far as like specifically i would say it, it just varies for whatever field and there's so many good communities out there mm -hmm. um excuse me that can recommend um, and people are so willing to help young people, um, which is, you know, wonderful. Um, obviously, I mean, we're, you know, making this content right now because, uh, <laughs> That's so you know, true. we want to we want to share what we've learned and all that fun stuff. So, um, you know, if, if you're ever like confused or, or, you know, whatever it may be, there's definitely people you can ask. Yeah. Um, kind of going off of like the community aspect, what role do you think college plays in the career of a young designer or creator, artist, or business owner? Yeah. Do you think college is, is necessary for success? Yeah. So, I mean, 
I would never say that it's necessary. I know that a lot of times it feels like it is. Um, but, you know, you can, you can go to a different type of school. You can get an apprenticeship. Um, mm. You know, going back to the wood shop thing, sometimes I wish that I had just, like, you know, figured something <laughs> out, like learned how to set tile or whatever it may be. Um, but I think, you know, there are things that any type of continuing education can help with that sort of speeds along the process, right? Like anybody yeah. can get, you know, lucky whether they, um, you know, are like, think of it like a high school basketball player, like what LeBron James went straight to the NBA. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't actually know yeah. if that, yeah. okay, cool. Um, I think. You think, I don't know. <laughs> don't quote us, don't quote me. Don't quote me on that. Don't come for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes people can, you know, get lucky and an opportunity presents itself and you kind of like skip some of the things that could, you know, propel yeah. your career. And and so I, th- sometimes when I think about college, I kind of feel feel like that about it, right? Like you're fast forwarding through, um, you know, you're making a lot of connections in a really short mm-hmm. amount of time um, and you're spending a really, like a high amount of time with those connections, like within the time. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, like the professors that I had and and like a lot of them I'm still very close with or I, you know, try to be. um, And same thing with like the friends that I've made. And those are all people that, you know, I've been like, hey, I'd like to try this thing. Like, would you support me? Whether that's I'm looking for an internship, I'm looking for a job and they're Mm. giving recommendations, referrals. You just have like a much wider network. Um, And then also, like, I had, you know, the, I think what education, like I said, any continuing continuing education provides is a structure. Um, So, like, I remember thinking, you know, I never wanted to use Adobe Illustrator. And it was way too (laughs) confusing to me. Like, I was barely. Don't come for us. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, well, I know. No, it's okay now. (laughs) I never wanted to use it. It looked way too confusing Um, but I made a poster for Claudia's birthday once, um, which is one of our friends. Um, and this is probably freshman year, spring semester. (laughs) I had no idea what I was doing. I was watching YouTube tutorials. Like I was just, ugh. and then a friend behind me in class was like, what's that? And I was like, oh my God, it's like this silly little, like I was trying to draw cookies. It's nothing, it's nothing nothing, serious. Don't look at this. And he was like, you should illustrate for the student newspaper. And I was like, Whoa. bro, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, that's fine. Neither does anyone else. And I was like, cool. <laughs> and so what that gave me was like this this thing to be a part of where, you yeah. know, people were sending out articles. Here's what we needed illustrations for this week. I take a look. I'm like, I'll take that one. And then I'll try mm-hmm. to draw that. And sometimes you don't get the one you want. So you have to think about, like, how am I even going to do this? And I made a lot of bad <laughs> stuff. A lot of bad stuff. Before you, you know, start getting through and figuring it out. But that that forced me to sit down and learn the program in in this case. Right. And so that structure that this piece of my education provided, like all the little steps that had to happen, like propelled my skills. I never just on my own because that's how my brain works. I never would have just (laughs) done that by myself Um, and I'm always amazed at people who have the motivation to continue learning things like on their own Um, whether it's like 3d rendering or you know um, you know VR whatever it is Um, I'm always like wow that's incredible (laughs) like I'm (laughs) I'm working in what I know and I'm trying to learn more but it's tough (laughs) yeah I'm so impressed I didn't even realize like I think that's so incredible that your you gained like quite literally industry experience for a newspaper though you know though it was a college newspaper yeah. hashtag the daily orange. hashtag the best college newspaper in the country uh, what yes what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> say it louder um yeah. but <laughs> um but i think that's so incredible that it, you would have you may not have ever known that opportunity existed if it weren't for just 
that student, yeah. that your classmate, just being tapping you on the shoulder, yeah. not minding their own business. Yeah, uh, which I love that just, for him because we've stayed really good friends, and he doesn't. <laughs> and you know what? It comes in handy. No, I think that's so cool. Of, I think that's there are so many opportunities out there that I think is so. I mean, I'm overwhelmed with them at times, and yeah. I'm sure high school students, especially now, if you're a senior, are are overwhelmed. Yeah. With, every possible path you can take and i don't know i know yeah it just kind of goes back to an active listener of just like sometimes what people what advice people give what opportunities people yeah. offer just sometimes you need to take it and run with it yeah and honestly that it the being overwhelmed with everything and like trying to listen to everything too it's yeah. it's so true and but like i didn't know that editorial illustration is like a yeah. career path, right? You could just only do that, right? Yeah. Or like, you know, you meet you meet somebody who's like, I work for this company that makes this very specific part of this very specific machine. Mm-hmm. And you're like, somebody mm-hmm. has to do that, right? Like there's <laughs> so, there's almost so many different opportunities and ways your life could go. It's almost never gonna be a straight path. And no. I think, <laughs> At least for me and a lot of my friends growing up, we desperately wanted it to be. Um, And so I think kind of leaning into, you know, just letting, like, saying yes, like, to my friend and being like, he's like, I I was, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, good luck. You can do it. I'm I'm already, I already (laughs) forwarded your email. I'm like, oh, (laughs) oh, okay, cool. And I just, Um, I basically just did that, you know, uh, a couple of months ago for a client they said they wanted a sign and they wanted it and I came up with a cool design and they were like cool can you make it and I was like for sure I can <laughs> absolutely I can learn how to use a jigsaw and a circular saw and go buy the lumber and cut the lumber and <laughs> yes I can do it mm-hmm. and operate a forklift to create a 4,500 square foot mural girl, and girl don't know I am not forklift certified don't put that out there I'm I'm like OSHA like uh scissor lift <laughs> and, oh scissor lift there it is so sorry not not and, forklift and articulated boom lift but I'm not forklift certified I am so sorry I am so sorry I did not mean to uh uh embellish your your recipe thank you thank you <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think no matter what career path, uh, a student chooses, like, I mean, I was four years ago, five years ago, I was studying human skeletal remains and like, you're literally the coolest person in the world. No, (laughs) but I think it just goes to show that like your passions are going to continue to evolve just as you do. And you have to be self-aware of what you're passionate about and not be afraid to chase them yeah like i don't think you probably would have guessed that you'd be operating a boom (gasps) articulated lift nor (laughs) running a circular saw jigsaw so yeah i think sometimes you have to just be i mean you have to say no i to respect your own boundaries Mm -hmm. and to um you know practice self-care and take care of your well-being but you have to lean into the yeses too especially the ones that are most scary yeah like absolutely and you know i think that's a the lifts are a great example because like i had worked (laughs) a lot like i the first time i used an articulated lift like i didn't have my license now granted i didn't get my license till i was like 23 but (laughs) i was operating this lift before i was operating a car like i don't know but like you you're just like yeah sure and then you get the proper safety equipment literally and you're gonna be fine (laughs) you know you have you have a a very strong rope and it's locked in there and it's not gonna let you fall all the way down so figure out who your who your rope is or what your rope is yeah (laughs) and i think it's safe to say that whatever your student or teacher that is watching this like yeah they obviously have a creative mind if they're you know passionate about digital media so like having a creative mind is i think just the start of being able to problem solve and Mm. being able to you know not necessarily roll with the punches because i feel like it's not all going to be punches but just to be able to be adaptable and flexible there it is (laughs) absolutely 100 percent 
Um, I wanted to ask, um, at what point did you decide that you wanted and needed to start your own business? And what was the hardest part in making that transition? Yeah. Um, So I knew I wanted to do it almost immediately after I graduated college. Um, Whoa. Okay. So I had... Um, I had just graduated right from Syracuse going to arguably the best college in the country for the program I was in for advertising. And I had just overall for life and experience. Yeah. This isn't a, this isn't a plug. (laughs) We're not getting paid. We should. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe if we keep talking highly about it they'll they'll stop sending us letters yeah. to donate. <laughs> and and kinda like maybe forgive some of the student <laughs> loan stuff. I don't know. We can always try. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so on that note, I had just graduated yes. from Syracuse. Um and you know, really good school, very expensive school. Um and, you know, granted like I'm sure a lot of um, you know, students out there working really hard to get scholarships and all that stuff. Um, and then I had an internship in New York City. And then the summer after I graduated, I had an internship at an ad agency in Dubai. Yeah. 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 You should, yeah. yeah. In Dubai. Like, <laughs> I had never left, like, upstate New York, let alone, uh, <laughs> except to go to New York City once for a summer. You know, like, yeah. I, I had no business doing that but I was just like sure why not right (laughs) going back to what we were talking about um but you know spent about 10 weeks there and kind of had an inkling at when I worked at the agency the summer before but I was like this is not I can't do this like everybody I worked with was great um you know all of the experiences I had were awesome I was just like I can't this is not the format in which this is gonna thrive like mm. I am, I'm not gonna work super well with this and so I was like pretty scared because here I am you know with yeah. all of like the pressure of the degree now that I've gotten it right mm. to to act on it yeah. um, and I will say I was lucky that I was able to also take another major um, and that was citizenship and civic engagement so I do feel like those two parts of my life really combined and you know manifest in public art and murals Um, absolutely and so it you know it on that point it does look a little you know straight and narrow the pathway but um i i was like oh gosh i i gotta do this so um yeah i i um had gone to ohio to my my friend's um parents coffee shop uh, after I got back from Dubai, um, because I kept talking about wanting to paint a mural, <laughs> and uh, eventually he was like, "Hey, my mom needs a mural," and I was like, <laughs> "I'm going to Ohio, baby." <laughs> and so I spent two weeks working on something that probably would have taken me like five days. Now <laughs> fills me. Anyway, that's that's the process you learn. But yes. um, yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> um, and. I was like, oh yeah, this is this is definitely the the direction that I want to be going in. And so, um, I was lucky enough that I was able to start working freelance graphic design almost, mm-hmm. um, you know, immediately, and worked with a really great boss um, for several years, and then um, eventually was able to save up enough that I could just like take the leap. And that just happened last like it's been a year that's it that's it so um but i was i remember just being like oh god like what are my what are my friends what are my parents gonna say when i'm like yeah i'm not working for my boss anymore i'm just doing this stuff Mm -hmm. i'm just hoarding paint like i got so (laughs) much paint and they're like why is where is all this paint gonna go um and then my mom in a conversation was like oh yeah i always kind of figured you would start your own business at some point and i was like what what (laughs) she was like yeah you just kind of had that like it always just seemed like something that was going to happen you know just knowing you i was like oh okay cool (laughs) nice (laughs) so so that is that is um 
how it happened. Um, and I think what was the other part? Uh, the hardest, the hardest part, part in making hard? that transition was, um, you know, monetarily. That's a huge yeah. risk to take. Um, but I had a big enough safety net with my family um, mm -hmm. and with, um, you know, the money that I'd saved up. Um, and but recognizing that that's not possible for most people. I got yeah. I just got really lucky again that mm -hmm. fast forwarding kind of thing that I was mentioning earlier um, resulted in a really big project so um, and then yeah the hardest part was monetarily and then the can can what continues to be the hardest part is keeping myself accountable <laughs> and being my own boss because because I love what I do I can just yeah. mess around all day if I wanted <laughs> and you know draw pretty pictures but uh that's not really you know the goal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah i when uh i think either it was julia or, or you who told me that you started your own business and i was like well duh like <gasps> oh my gosh. that's audra yeah yeah oh, that's so funny well yeah i mean like i i guess I actually just interviewed uh, a former Strive student who um, is switching her major from, um, uh, it was more so like marketing and um, kind of more b business, but more like content related within mm -hmm. marketing and, you know, doing content creation. Yeah. Um, and she switched it to accounting because when she finally got into kind of like the industry with her in internship, mm -hmm. she realized really quick, like this if I continue down this path, I my passion for this is going to be squandered. Yeah, and I'm going to lose my creative. Yeah, like my creative abilities. My yeah, just that that drive. And so oh, that's wow. it's a really hard decision to come to. Like no matter what age you are, like yeah. post college, while you're in college, like how can how do you when did you recognize that and yeah. like what does that feel like and any advice for like being brave oh, to man. walk away for that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's, no, you're good. That's <laughs> hitting you with these hard no, questions. That's, I'm just amazed at that student. That's such like a mature thing to yeah. realize, you know, so so quickly. Because um, you know, kind of saving your creativeness for a different part of you, like not having mm -hmm. it. I mean, I'm sure there are ways you can get creative with accounting. Although I feel like you go to federal prison, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think and that's our second episode mm -hmm. coming soon no. coming to this one's brought to you by the IRS um, <laughs> no but like that's a that's a pretty you know bold decision to make yeah and you know you can always change your mind um, but I think I think for me it's like I it's something I have always loved and mm. like I I mean you were athletic growing up. I was going to be a physical therapist for a long time, which is a great <laughs> career. And there's a lot of good places in upstate New York to learn physical therapy yeah. and like to, you know, get your doctor done. Great. I have, you know, whatever. But like, I was just like, that's what I'm going to do. Cause I like sports, but I've always, I've always liked art. I was never mm. like take, I didn't take art classes in high school. I wasn't like good at figure drawing. I'm still not good. And that's yeah, fine. Right. Clear. No, I'm d Danielle. If you ask me to draw a portrait, <laughs> I would crumble. Okay, and that's fine. That is fine. I actually, I, I think I have a, a point about that later too in my little notes. Um, <laughs> something kind of similar. But so I think I, re I was like, it's something that's always been a part of me, um, and it's gonna come out somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so if I can be the one in control of it, like, yeah, that's, that's so yeah, true. like I want to do that, and I. I also have this thing where I don't like it when people tell me what to do, <laughs> which can be tough when you're working with clients, right? Yeah. You kind of have to suck it up. But and you have to be you have to be able to adapt to their feedback. Oh even yeah, when you like poured your heart and soul yep. to a design like yeah. that. Is, yeah, I got a bit about that later too. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll talk. Yeah, put a pin in that. <laughs> put a pin in that. Yes. Um, circle back later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, so I was like, okay, I, I want to be making stuff f that I like, 
and I don't mm-hmm. want to be, I don't want to be making an ad for Infinity yeah. or a pharmaceutical company that I don't believe in. You know, all yeah. of these things that started to get conflicting. It's like, you no, know, if I don't want to, you know, I had somebody reach out to me about a book cover design, and I was like, and they were a political pundit, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, you know, having to reach out to my boss and be like, I don't know how to say, you know, how to, how do I say this in a respectful way? Yeah. Um, and so, but it, you know, you figure it out, you work it out, but having that luxury to be able to, able to, to say yeah. no to certain things, um, I knew that was going to be like kind of a non-negotiable for me in, mm. in work. Um, and so I needed to figure out how to make that happen. So <laughs> Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the biggest kept, uh, sorry, biggest kept secret mm. for owning your own business? Yeah. As a, speaking from a one year business owner. Yeah. Yeah. What is the biggest kept secret? Oh, I think it's really that there are, like, you have to <laughs> say scary things out loud. Um, mm. So, I have all these ideas in my head of where I want this thing to go, right? And um, I ended up, I hired a business coach pretty early on, um, and it ended up being pretty nice. It's not for everybody, but it was nice for me. And she had asked me, like, what is, like, what is your pipe dream? And so, like, having to be forced to say that out loud, like, that was, oh, that was tough. It still feels like it is. Um, yeah. so saying all these scary things out loud, like, I don't know what I'm doing with taxes. I don't actually know <laughs> how to write an email to de- like decline somebody that has solicited me for work. Like, I don't know how mm-hmm. to do these things. And it's so important to say it because yeah. that's the way that you find that there are so many more people out there that want to help you than you even can wrap your head around. I mean, like (laughs) just the sheer amount of small business email listservs that I'm on, like all the content (laughs) that is being created for small business owners. And it's like all over the world. You know, I'm like, I was just on a seminar from like the Harlem um, Chamber of Commerce, like a couple months ago. Like you just get connected with all these different uh, Mm. places, offices, people's jobs that exist to help you in this because so many people have done it and they're like this stuff is not easy um and you need you know you need maybe several you know guiding hands to help you throughout the way yeah so i would say that's probably one of the biggest kept secrets is like you have to just like you know get over whatever the shame you might feel about not knowing Mm. and be like, no, I don't know. Cause I, you know, I, I didn't come out of the womb, like absolutely knowing these (laughs) things for sure. You're going to need to ask questions. Yeah. That was so good. And and so applicable to not just owning a business too. Yes. Very true. Very true. Um, What advice would you give to high school students looking to pursue advertising, web design, graphic design, you know, digital media, you know, that pathway? What what advice would you give? Yeah, um, I think there's so many things. There's so many things you could say here. And I (laughs) I talked about like the structure, right? Um, But I also, uh, you know, when I got to do those illustrations for the newspaper, that was great. But then at the end, like toward the end, I was like, oh, my God, I have another deadline to meet. Like, I just need to graduate. <laughs> you know? like, so but I remember like I learned Photoshop because I would make memes with Cole, one of our other friends. <laughs> like I have this like one of my hard drives is honestly like filled of pictures of the chancellor of Syracuse, who's a very <laughs> wonderful man. I didn't know him very well at the time. And I was like putting hats on him and like all these things like I look back now I'm like good lord like just the photoshop quality horrible right (laughs) horrible but I was just photoshopping my like going back in my friends facebooks and finding pictures their mom had posted and putting their head on their current body like their past head current body you know just like all that stuff like the stuff that you 
are looking to do when you're like having fun and you know just like being goofy and uh, and that kind of thing that can be so eye-opening and help you really develop your skills and then the other thing that can be it's funny because you have that on one end but the other thing is working within constraints Right. So one of my Mm. favorite things as a graphic designer, and it also applies a lot to walls because you have windows, you have ductwork, you have the surface, um, uh, you have all these things that are physically in your way and constricting your creativity. Um, You know, and I just saw somebody just sent me a post yesterday of um, a muralist who would paint these beautiful murals of uh, women with like, you know, black women, usually with really like kinky curls. Right. And they get yeah. kind of like cut off here. It's like a fence. And then behind the fence is a big bush, like a, you know, oh, and it kind of yeah. he matches the hair to like the natural surroundings. The surroundings. And yeah. so, you know, yeah, some may see it like a blank fence, but this guy was like, oh, no, I'm going to take what's here and work with it somehow. Um, mm-hmm. And so what I was going to say earlier is um, one of my favorite things as a graphic designer is to like have so much information a client wants me to get on like a a 11 by 17 poster and i'm like you watch i'm gonna get this all in here (laughs) i don't know how i'm gonna do it but it's gonna happen (laughs) and like that's like those are the physical constraints right with digital stuff it's different right like time limits um Mm -hmm. what you know you only have so many things you can do if you're a photographer versus a videographer right like how can you convey emotion in a photo when other people have a video so mm-hmm. yeah, whatever it may be, it's it's fun to work without any constraints, and it's super fun to work within them. So it's a good balance of both. Okay, um, kind of going off of what you just said, like when you're working with <clears throat> working with clients, you have to do you do your diligence mm-hmm. and do a lot of research, mm-hmm. and it takes so much communication to be able to nail the design that they want. Yeah, like how how do you perfect the perfect design like what is your recipe for success in yeah. getting kind of into your clients minds to see what they want that creation to become yeah so um i'll kind of i'll walk through this quickly with sort of an example like a mini case study um i had done <laughs> a request for proposals so a lot of times whether it's a business or a um you know municipality uh, village, whatever, they'll, if they're seeking a mural, sometimes they'll, they'll write a request for proposals, which is like a document. And they're like, Hey, uh, we're looking for a mural and here's the specifications of the location of the dimensions. And here's what we're thinking. Um, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And then all the other bullet points, um, excuse me. And then, um, yes. So I, Um, was like, oh, this is really cool. This is this theater in Buffalo, um, and it's a smaller theater. They're kind of like avant-garde type of stuff, which I don't really, (laughs) you know, I'm not that cultured. (laughs) So, (laughs) like, let me take, let me, like, really read this through. And, like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's online. I print it out. I'm highlighting, right? And so I read about that this building is very specific and um, it was created in the 1940s by a particular architect. There's not a lot of his buildings left. It was a Greyhound bus terminal. Um, It's a very Uh specific type of architecture. Um, And so, and a lot of the details have been left. Um, And so all of these other things, um, and I was like, okay, cool. Like I researched the building. I researched, researched other buildings that the architect had made. I researched what did Greyhound buses look like in the forties. I got really into mm-hmm. the architecture movement, you know, and, um, compiled like a big grouping of the inspiration photos and then did a sketch that was not very good. Um, <laughs> and this has been the common theme throughout most of my proposals is uh, my sketches don't look anything like the finished product but (laughs) i take the time to read the proposal and i write of like a compelling narrative like this is what i think you could envision for this space because of all of these things that you listed Mm. um and here's why uh and so you know um i when i because i ended up getting that um getting the proposal which was wonderful and it's it's one of the things that I'm the most proud of, and there's no words in it at all. 
it's only shapes and funky, you know, whatever colors. <laughs> um, and I remember talking to the director, you know, um, after it was finished and he was like, yeah, we had probably about two dozen submissions. Um, and wow. yeah, which for like a Buffalo sized area, like that's, that's yeah, a lot. Um, and he yeah. was like, and you know, there was one submission that just had greyhounds painted on the wall. There was one submission of like the old theater director, like just huge. I mean, this was a gigantic wall for like a person's portrait. Like that's a lot. Um, <laughs> and so it was, it's kind of like a read the room type of deal, except yeah. uh, professional. Like literally. Yes, literally. <laughs> uh, and so like, he's telling me about all these different submissions and I'm like, they, they just missed the mark, you know, like, and that going back to the active listening thing. Um, yeah. and, so that is absolutely the key um, to, you know, really nailing down for, when it's for a client, when it's for something, mm -hmm. somebody who it's like they have a vision and they can't get it from their head onto the screen, into paper, like whatever it may be. Like you're, you're trying to you're trying to see inside their mind. You got to ask some questions. Yeah, and, absolutely. And if they take the time to write it all down, like in a whether it's a creative brief or a proposal, whatever it may be, um, like you better be reading it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Or you better be taking notes mm -hmm. as they're as they're spitting it yeah. out to you. You know, half of the I swear to God, half of the studio is just old notebooks of mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I did want to ask is like. I know that we might not have a lot of high school students that um, kind of take the, the path that you took to being a muralist, yeah. but like, why, what led you to painting murals and why do you think murals are so vital and vibrant as a way to showcase a brand and kind of that messaging and yeah. its place in public, in the public eye? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a huge one, right? Is um, cause I'll do, I'll do private or public murals. I don't, you know, whatever, but doing public ones is so much more fun because yeah. everybody can see them. And, <laughs> you know, there's, there's art in a gallery and it can be mm. literally behind a physical paywall. Um, and so I think public art is, you know, it's the opposite of that, right? It's like, nope, yeah. let's make it accessible to everybody, uh, whether you like it or not. And, um, I think that's kind <laughs> of the fun part is um yeah. you know you can just kind of have fun with it and um that's that's part of what makes it such um such a special thing i think but um yeah i'm looking at my little notes here um i mean <laughs> honestly um what led me to painting murals was um i like on instagram i was on instagram and <laughs> i was just <laughs> scrolling all the time and I really <laughs> liked lettering I liked hand lettering I always have liked fancy handwriting so I would just get served videos of sign painters and I still mm -hmm. want to learn sign painting I definitely like I love sign painting um, and then I would get murals and then I'd see graphic designers who did murals as like an added mm -hmm. thing and I was like wow that's cool um, and then I'd be out and about and um, I'd see murals and things that I didn't like. And, <laughs> you know, you can complain about things, but if you're not the one, you know, yeah. working to change them, like, okay, then that's just gonna <laughs> be how it is. So I, you know, all of that to say, I'm not a total snob, but <laughs> like pay attention to the things that uh, bug you. Um, yeah. because whether that's, you know, could lead you to like an invention, right? Like this water bottle falls over all the time. It's got all the dents in it. Right. Um, and you know, it's nice, but I lost this cap like 70 times like, oh, well here, wouldn't it be super great if you had something that was like all in one and it even had a little yeah. handle, you know? So the, those, mm -hmm. those kind of like pain points became the things that I was like, no, just don't, don't be like, wow, that's an ugly logo. Yeah. Like become the problem solver. Right? Like why, and why is it an ugly logo? Can you tell me why? Mm. And yeah. once you start thinking like that, or I don't like that picture in the newspaper, what is it about this? Or that video is really, doesn't feel like it was well done. I'm, I'm not saying you need to like 
take a dump on everybody but like yeah, no. but look at it with a critical yeah, lens yeah. And, oh, and yeah uh, always and and pay it like paying attention to the things that resonate with you the most or that irk you the most um and yeah. that is definitely like uh, that's what you're geared toward and that can help yeah. you you know find what it is that you really want to do <laughs> um why is it important to find a mentor, you know, as a designer, an artist, muralist, creator, oh. business owner? Um, I know you kind of mentioned you hired a business coach. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important to find a good mentor? And who are the mentors in your life right now? Yeah. Oh, so it's it's <laughs> definitely really important. But um, some people have luck with being like, I'm looking for a mentor. Will you be my mentor? But that is just never how it was going to be. For me mm -mm. um and so i think it's just kind of the things that naturally happened like the relationships that like whether it was those professors that i was really interested in learning more from um or you know friends or whoever um just kind of like sticking with the people that you really like admired and respected um or continue yeah. to respect um so a lot of my mentors like are friends are my friends um and a couple yeah. like whether they're in the like the same age as me a couple years older um all these different you know these different people that um i continue to learn from and that i can bring things to and ask questions mm -hmm. about like hey i really don't know what to do here um like yeah. can you give me some direction um and then the other thing about mentors that's so important and it might always not be coming from a mentor um could be just a teacher could be whatever but um like we were talking about earlier going through um getting feedback and getting critiqued on yeah. things it's in the creative world it's so um it's so prevalent right and so i i think you know talking about college speeding things up having to go through three back-to-back -back portfolio classes that were like several hours Ooh. right like yeah. um well three semesters in a row i mean not during the day <laughs> that would be horrible um and you you know you're getting your stuff dunked on quite honestly like yeah. and i look back and i'm like yeah that shouldn't that was not great odd like <laughs> you know and um so like that's the stuff that helps you get to where you need to be um mm -hmm. is that feedback and but it it might take you a while if you're like me to get to a place where you can like see it as that mm -hmm. um see it as just feedback on your work and not feedback yeah. on you or your character, or your character. Or, right yeah yeah and granted like if you do some like mean mean work like okay <laughs> maybe time to sit and think right yes. but uh but like on the whole most people like find the people that want to help you get better and yeah. so you know i love my really good friend kateri she went on she was in the graphic design program she went on to get a master's you know she'll probably teach um at some point and when i want something like when i want feedback on something i'm like this doesn't feel right and she's like it's not like that's because it's not <laughs> you know and like those are the people you got to find um yeah and so you know a, a mentor can can come from anywhere um for sure yeah no and that's so true like i i mean uh i through my <clears throat> through my writing i mm. there were some i really got into kind of more like autoethnography mm. and um memoir writing yeah. and like that is like your story yeah. like that is a part of who you are and part of and i remember like really struggling when i would get critiqued on yeah. it and just like having to kind of detach myself from the 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 story yeah. and detach myself from the the art itself mm -hmm. and just allow that process to be critiqued and like it's 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 so it's not easy no. like i remember um sophomore year was the first time where i was like i can't do this yeah. how do i do this like um but it's so important to get to have people whose opinions that you value yes. and who will be completely honest yeah. with you and do in a way that builds you up yep. rather than tears yeah, you down yeah exactly exactly because i mean like 
I had some incredible like students in my cohort and everything and then I had mm. students that every time I presented something they'd be like oh my god I hate you this is so good I'm like you, you don't <laughs> have to do it like that you know I saw I literally yeah. saw something the other day that was like if you have to and I'm sure this is common but if you have to have, if you have to punch down to stand up like you're not mm. it's not yeah. good it was in relation to uh what is his name Joe Coy the comedian oh, that oh the comedian that hosted the Golden Globes. Anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah. Okay. Alas. alas. <laughs> um, I wanted to also ask uh, one of our last questions. Where do you find inspiration for your art? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> old stuff. Old stuff. I have a whole drawer over here. This actually is all like old. Um, yeah. Let's see. That's my projector. <laughs> Let me just move that really quick. Um, these are all sorts of like old print blocks and things. This is like an what? old Brayer. This is my aunt Ooh. got me. Um, this was in my garage um, I, I, the, from the place that I rent. Um, just old things that I find, um, old packaging, um, but also like, n you know, new modern things, whether that's on like Behance or Dribble or Pinterest, like what Instagram, mm, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I mean, everything is a remix, and I stand by that. It's a funny. No, absolutely. It's a funny YouTube video. You should go watch it if you haven't seen it. Actually, I don't. Oh, where's my? What did I do? Oh, here it is. <laughs> Bear with me one yeah. second. There. No, I like that this is show and yeah. tell. There, well, it's like <laughs> under a lot of other books. There is a book that really it's a very it's a very common book um and it's good yes yes that's taylor my boss <gasps> he quotes this oh book all the time do you like an yes. artist there's yes there's a workbook version too i think there's like lots of like other merch related to it bro this this thing yeah. like you don't even have to be an artist it's just a creative person like mm. everybody's looking at everybody else's stuff and that's how you learn okay yeah. so that's like at, like for me it's all this all this old stuff vintage type all of the things that i love um you know i i take a look at it and i'm like wow that's so crazy how intricately <laughs> everything was carved i don't have to do that now but that's cool um and let me mix it with this new way of doing things yeah. right like um just in graphic design there's so many softwares out there that will mimic old cheap printing techniques like that you literally mm -hmm. buy just so it would look like the old and cheap stuff and i'm like i love that <laughs> so um i could i could spend all day just looking at old books internet archive you know but this is this book was definitely like it it kind of um gave per, gave permission a little bit yeah and it was it was a big turning point for me a lot of um it is so difficult to say that I do graphic design work when I'm speaking to <laughs> you. Um, <laughs> but as I'm still an infant, um, I, as I'm still trying to learn to walk in graphic yeah. design, a lot of things that I've designed, and I know students do this too, of like just looking at like their favorite sports yes. teams and just asking like, how, how do they do yeah. this? And do you, could I create yes. this? And then just going for yeah. it. Honestly, I, I say that a lot about like, when I watch any kind of like late night or SNL thing, all of the, even, even ESPN, I was just watching the, the Bills game the other night or something. And it had like, yeah. or maybe, no, I guess it was the Chiefs game. They had, um, Colin Capper or not Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> Patrick, no, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. So Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, like on a dollar bill like Photoshop yeah. and I was like that's like all all I was doing in school was parodies like just I was trying yeah. to look at stuff that other people made and was like how do you make that I want to make that I want to make silly stuff um yeah and so that's like that is such a good one and you know I have this other I'm not going to dig it out but the um oh it's going to kill me that I can't remember her name the woman who she does a lot of prop styling for Wes Anderson movies prop styling oh. like vintage prop styling she finds like dead stock paper that would have been used in the time period that you know the movie was going on and this is her whole job it's her whole job yeah. it's so uh, 
point. But anyway, like, who knew that was a job? And all because, you know, this person probably really liked old stuff and was trying to find, yeah. you know, really cool things. So. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. That's so, ah, yes. Yeah. Um, I, one thing that I've continued to struggle with as a writer um, is... I, I kind of want to ask if it, it translates to, over to, you know, creating and designing, um, is that uh, my professor always, I had told my professor this multiple times, especially when my, writing a thesis, is I, I just don't have the inspiration to do yeah. it. Like, um, I just can't find that in me to write. Yeah. And my professor so eloquently said that, like, if, if you waited until you were inspired to write, you would never get any mm-hmm. writing done. And I was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're right but like is is that true for designing oh, God, and yeah yeah i'm yeah, just like you have to get through you just have to do it yeah. you know like you just have to get in there you know get your i yeah. know it's so uh, you're like do i though yeah. and unfortunately you yeah. do <laughs> no there's a reason why that you know nike slogan is persisted all these years because yeah. it is the hardest thing is the starting um you know i i literally said earlier i really want to learn sign painting i've had the tools for a couple (laughs) years now (laughs) i just haven't sat down and done it and that is that is the thing so you know if you figure that out if any of the people watching this figure that out like (laughs) you can call me (laughs) because i'd like to talk (laughs) (laughs) that's yeah me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, it helps when you no, have a deadline. Was, and, yeah, oof, fire under yeah. your butt. And how do you do that? Like, I know when, when, how do you kind of set deadlines for yourself mm. when you own your own business and when you might not necessarily have as hard of deadlines as you do when you're working with a client yeah. or something? Yeah. That, that one is definitely one I'm still working on. Um, no, I will say okay. that one, one thing that helps is, you know, any kind of person in your life who can be an accountability buddy. Um, mm. Like I remember, um, you know, Claudia, who's one of our friends. She's really she good at is that. like, she's that person for me. She's one of those people. <laughs> like you find people whose brains work different than yours. And, you know, for her, it was like, yeah, of course I'm going to, you know, go f- for a yeah. three mile run three times a week or do this like incredibly difficult yeah. workout like for sure that's just what i have to do it's on my schedule so i'm doing it <laughs> it's not doing it in like you're like well that's just claudia right. and like claudia is also still in the same boat of like she doesn't get up every day wanting to run yeah three miles. i don't know well, I'm, <laughs> well i mean maybe but i'm sure there are some days yeah. where she doesn't yeah, want to doesn't want to do and she still gets up and yeah, yeah exactly s- still gets up and does it yeah. anyway yeah and so i think well i think it also helps when you're like oh man like you are the sole person so you yeah <laughs> there's nobody else who's gonna do it right yeah. so it better be you because if not who else um and so that's that's definitely a good like a good little reminder sometimes i I like get yeah. an email and I'm like, uh, you'll deal with that later. And I'm like, you, <laughs> you are now don't hurt. Don't hurt future you. Like you gotta yeah. be nice to right now. You. <laughs> yeah. I was talking with a teacher who I work with. Um, her name is Shanda and she, she made the quote of like, are you being kind to yourself by procrastinating? Uh. And I felt so much conviction when she said that, like, I've never looked at it from that yeah. lens. Like, I'm I always make the joke I was like oh that's for future Danielle yes, to worry about yeah. but but future that's not being kind to future yes. Danielle or future Audra like that we're not being kind to ourselves yeah. and um yeah just thinking of it in that lens really kind of shifted my perspective yes that's it's definitely a big one and you know um I say that knowing full well there are at least three buckets of various paintbrushes uh spatulas uh can paint containers and um it's just just a lot of things from salt city market 
that I still <laughs> have, like, with lids on them. Like, oh, you still have to clean those. <laughs> so you can you can just do it. You can just procrastinate for years if you want to. But, like, it's not, because think of that. Future me still has to open those buckets and deal with whatever's yeah. in there. <laughs> and that's not very nice. Oh, baby. It's not going to be fun. Yeah. But future, you know, past me was uh was not was not thinking of of the the me now. So I'm I'm getting better at cleaning my brushes currently. So on that <laughs> note, what cool projects are you working on now yeah. in addition to cleaning your brushes? In addition to cleaning my brushes, um I feel like I've finally gotten my studio into a livable and workable state, which is important. Um, Heck yeah. yeah. Just just having a place for everything, knowing where everything is, just it makes because the creative process can be so messy, um yeah. it just makes everything so much like smoother. Um yeah. and so that's that's a wonderful project that I've been working on. Um let's see, I am currently working on a mural for a bakery in the design process. Yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. um I had like a big gap in actually painting in the fall and then um, since early December I haven't really done a ton of painting and so it's, it's been a lot of graphic design work. Um, I've been doing websites, logos. I don't love doing websites um, so there's another thing. Uh, anybody listening, if you don't want to do something, <laughs> don't put it out there. <laughs> that's so true because i it was like a thing that i do you know did for a buddy and then this buddy referred me to another buddy and now i'm and then it and now I'm the spiraled from there girl, and like i don't really <laughs> I'm, i was calling my brother the other day like I, do you know css i cannot i just need this thing to be centered <laughs> like <laughs> ah! so that's um that's a little bit of what I'm, I'm working on now um and then i always have a constant backlog of projects updating my own portfolio which is quite outdated mm -hmm. um not quite and i'm always redoing my own website and yeah, yeah i've got like four thousand things you know how it is on the back burner i'm trying <laughs> to learn how to embroider you know like yeah right i want i want okay. to scan all these old packaging parts that i found and upload them to Flickr, like that's yeah you yeah. do and also i need to clean brushes <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm working on but, but that's for future audrey mm -hmm. to worry about <laughs> oh well audrey thank you so so yeah. much like yeah. this was this was an incredible conversation yes. and um i hope our teachers and students who are watching and listening uh just find it as impactful and nourishing as oh, i did that's so kind oh my goodness and i hope i'm um, sorry it was really long no you're fine and well i before i let you go where can people connect with yeah. you and kind of follow along your incredible artwork oh my gosh, yeah so um, you can visit my website, um, which is just tofd.co. I'm in the process of finally linking my domains up to the short one because that's a lot easier than okay. saying 304designcode.com. 304designcode.com. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then okay. you can follow me on Instagram, 3 of 4, all spelled out, dot design. Um, because okay. the 3 of 4 account even all spelled out has been taken for years and nobody from Instagram is responding to me because there's like no activity on it. There's like three <laughs> followers and I would like to have that handle. It's Fruit. so rude. So anyway, for now it's three of four dot design, but stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you again. Oh, thank you, Danielle.